Welcome back, I'm Jen Woodhouse from the House of Wood and I am so excited to show you how we installed these gorgeous hardwood floors. I mean, this is the first time I've ever installed this type of flooring. It was so much easier than I expected and it looks incredible. And I am so lucky to have my very dear friend, Josh Brantingham here. Josh has a ton of experience building and remodeling homes, so he made sure we got off on the right foot and really set us up for success. And looking back, this project was totally doable as a beginner. Told you. And it was way less complicated and intimidating than I expected. The most important part to me on a project like this is making sure that you get started off on the right foot. I think there's an old saying that says, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So it's really important that you take a little bit of time. And I know that's hard. A lot of times you're, you're, not, you're anxious, you're in a hurry to get that floor down and see you know, this, this beautiful product installed but it's just it's really wise and important to stop and get everything laid out correctly at the first it will save you a lot of of time grief and heartache uh, in the long run so we decided to pick the longest wall uh, exterior wall in the home and that gave us an opportunity to make sure we had a long straight clear benchmark so to speak to start from typically when you're laying floors in a single room you'd measure the room to make sure your first and last planks are similar in width in other words, you don't want your first plank to be at full width and then your last plank to be super skinny. You kind of want to split the difference so it looks more professional. Well, because we installed this flooring across our entire first floor of our house, it was next to impossible to ensure that every first and last plank in every room would be the same width. So there are a lot of different walls and doorways that the floorboards would die into. So we just skipped that step and then started laying the planks as is, knowing that we might have to adjust along the way and it still turned out incredible, and it just worked out really well for us. All right, so now that our chalk line is snapped, we're gonna roll out the underlayment. You can secure the underlayment with staples if you want, but once the floors are laid on top of it, it shouldn't shift too much underneath. It's really important that you get that first run uh, shimmed and braced to the wall. Because this is a floating floor project, we're not using you know, nails or fasteners, so it's really important that it be shimmed and braced to the exterior wall so that as you're moving across the floor, that stays solid and it stays right where you want it to be. You know, we, we had these really handy uh, shims that are adjustable, that, that work really well in most applications. Unfortunately for us, we weren't able to use them because of the way that the, this home was constructed. The drywall stops a little bit short of the, of the ground, which made the shims that we had want to buckle underneath there into that gap. So it was just wiser for us to cut custom our own shims. Not a big deal. Once we had our chalk line uh, from left to right, we just were able to measure off of that, figure out what thickness of shims that we need. Took us about an extra half hour, I would say. Once we had those in place, we were able to start, get our first run in, and from then it was off to the races. We chose a wide plank engineered hardwood. It's called French Oak Delano by Malibu Wide Plank, and it's available at the Home Depot. I'll leave a link in the description box below so you could check it out. All right, my favorite thing about this flooring is that it's click lock, so installation was super easy. Any homeowner can tackle this project and save themselves thousands of dollars on the install. This flooring can be installed as a floating floor, meaning it's not nailed or glued down, or it can be glued down. We chose to float it because it's just easier, less messy, and I'm a bit afraid of long-term commitment. You can install this floor on, above, or below grade, and no acclimation is required. I love that it comes in various lengths, with 70% of the planks being the longest at 48 inches. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this click lock feature. There's a tongue and groove so that each piece fits together like a puzzle. So once you lay the tongue in the groove, it should click and lock into place easily. You shouldn't have to wrestle with your floorboards. If you are, then something's not right. They really should lay down nice and flat with the joints tight. So we laid the first few rows down, starting from left to right, top to bottom, checking periodically to make sure that we were staying parallel to that chalk line that we snapped. As more rows are being laid, the floor becomes more secure. We laid the planks in a random pattern, making sure to stagger the seams. There should be a minimum of six inches from the seam of one board to the seam of the board below it. Um, in other words, don't line up your seams. We also made sure to pepper the boards that had a more striking grain pattern evenly throughout the room so that they weren't right next to each other. For vents, floor outlets, around door jams, and other obstructions, we had to cut or notch out parts of the floorboards. 
So we just took our measurements and then used a jigsaw to make these cuts. And here's a handy measuring trick. Instead of using a tape measure, lay the board in place, flip it over, make your mark, and then make your cut. There were times when we'd have to trim the door casing so that the floorboard would fit underneath it, and we used the Dremel Multimax for this, which worked really well. Once all of the tricky parts are taken care of, installation will go pretty fast. It was easy to make great progress in very little time. And because we're floating the floor, it's easy to go back and lift up the planks if we made a mistake. This type of flooring is incredibly forgiving. If there's one thing I can tell you, it's to just start. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. You probably will, and that's okay. It might take more time, but because there are no nails or glue involved, it'll be fairly easy to course correct. Oh and knee pads. Definitely do not skip the knee pads. They were our saving grace. I cannot believe that we did this. It was our first time laying hardwood floors and it looks absolutely amazing. I am so proud of how it turned out. Oh, and please excuse the missing baseboards and trim. They're on order and hopefully they'll come in and we can install them before we have to host Thanksgiving next month. 10%, we have to be smart. 10% smarter than technology. <laughs> Took us a while for us to catch up. <laughs> Jen should walk over there and do it. This is her show. Today <laughs> we are installing this beautiful engineered hardwood from, shoot, where is this from? Home Depot. <laughs> Hold up. Home I'm a Depot. professional. Right here. Using this gorgeous engineered hardwood from, ah, oh, son of a gun! <laughs> and I'll leave the link to this flooring right here. In this <laughs> Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more DIY projects and home renovations. You'll find more info on jenwoodhouse.com and I am at Jen Woodhouse on Instagram and Facebook. So let's be friends. It'll be fun. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.